Salvation history is the history of the world from the fall of the first human beings to the coming of the Savior, Jesus Christ. We have a series of covenants that God sets up with humanity and these are related in all sorts of ways in what we call the Old Testament. There are many ways to view history. Some people see history in a Marxist sense, through a Marxist lens of a constant class struggle. Others see history as simply the will to power, that we make of it what we want, and there are great heroes who arise, and it is totally unpredictable. Others think history has no meaning whatsoever. As Christians, we believe that God is guiding history to a certain point, and this privileged view of history is given to us through the scriptures. The Jewish people were chosen to be the custodians of God's law. Someone once asked the philosopher Blaise Pascal for a proof in the existence of God, and he said, oh, the Jews, of course. This people has preserved itself through centuries and centuries and millennia, and has kept the same law and the same teachings and writings. And these, as Christians, we believe, are a series of relationships that God set up with the world, his influence becoming wider and wider, to the point where Jesus Christ comes for all of the world to re-establish the bond with humanity that was the original intention in creation. In this series of covenants, we have the figure of Noah and the universal flood that is interestingly accounted for in many of the cultures of the ancient world, as well as in the Bible, in the book of Genesis. We have Abraham, who is the father of faith, who was even willing to sacrifice his own son Isaac. Caravaggio here depicts the dramatic moment when Abraham, as the father of the faith, is willing to obey God's command to sacrifice his only son. Caravaggio literally depicts the moment where Abraham has the knife held by his terrified son's head. To save him, an angel comes in, holds Abraham's hand and stops the sacrifice. Caravaggio emphasises the power of the angel, the whiteness of his hand and the whiteness of the head of the boy. We see the ram nearby. The ram, as we know, will take the place of the boy in the sacrifice. The presence of the ram also alludes, probably, to the identity of Christ as the Lamb of God. And in fact, the whole scene foreshadows Christ's own sacrifice. Caravaggio takes full advantage of the dramatic nature of the scene with his characteristic use of light and darkness. Abraham is an older figure, in contrast to the light of the angel and the light of the boy. Caravaggio doesn't shy away from showing us the terror in the boy's face, and for us as viewers, that can seem quite troubling. But this is seen in the wider image of the father obeying God's command and the sacrifice that can be avoided, we know. Perhaps the most important figure in the whole history of salvation is Moses. The first five books of the Bible are called the books of Moses, the Pentateuch. Moses was the one chosen by God in Egypt to lead the people of Israel back to the promised land given to Abraham. And it was Moses who received the law of God and founded the nation together as one. We're looking at a fresco from the Sistine Chapel painted by Cosimo Roselli, who was one of a team of artists brought in by the Pope to decorate the chapel. Roselli has presented us with the crossing of the Red Sea, and it was one of a series of images relating to Moses, and the idea was to use Moses to prefigure events from the life of Christ, followed in the same series of frescoes. The artist depicts a moment of high drama. The narrative starts in the background right of the picture, where we can see Moses and Aaron approaching Pharaoh and asking Pharaoh to let the Israelites free. Pharaoh refuses, and we then see the scenes of Pharaoh and his army caught in the Red Sea, which Moses has safely crossed. The image that Roselli has created is full of drama. Pharaoh is seen at the forefront, screaming, surrounded by his soldiers, 
who are dressed in contemporary Renaissance costume, armour and weaponry. A hailstorm rages above the Egyptians, hail sent by God as punishment. But when we look in the sky, we can see the sun and a rainbow emerging, evidence of the liberation of the Israelites and the new world, the new start for them. On the left of the image, we see a young Moses standing with his staff, surrounded by the Israelites, free from captivity. I like the way the artist shows that Moses and his people have left behind the Egyptians and arrived in an almost a landscape of paradise. He shows this by means of the little lapdog and the prophetess Miriam playing on a musical instrument. We see in this image the transition from the servitude under the Egyptians to a new life of freedom and we see the presence of God centrally as a pillar. The image shows us the care of God for his chosen people, the Israelites, and the promise of renewal in the sacrament of baptism. The next great figure in salvation history is King David, who led to the beginning of the kingdom for God to unite this great nation of Israel into one kingdom. To understand salvation history, we also need to understand the prophets, how the kingdom of David became divided and eventually was in ruins and there was a great exile of the people. But the prophets were constantly pointing to restoration and the future and the coming of the Messiah. At the end of this long period of waiting, we have the pointing finger of John the Baptist, who is the last figure of the Old Testament and the beginning of the new. And it is he who points out Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God, as the fulfillment of all of that salvation history. John the Baptist was a colossus. He was seen even by secular writers of the ancient world like Josephus as a most remarkable and influential figure. People thought he would be the Messiah, the chosen one. But John the Baptist in his humility pointed to Jesus. <laughs>